as big as the Whitaker fight. Um, a number one contenders fight. Yeah, it's a big fight. Uh, but again, then again, it's just another fight. So uh, I feel great. I'm in the best shape of my career. I, I'm not coming off of an injury, so I'm able to maintain all the momentum I had going into the, in the Gaston fight, my last fight. I'm taking that into this one. And I feel great, man. I feel ready to go in there and just let it all go with no inhibition and no regard for my uh, dance partner's safety. And you just mentioned it, number one contender fight. He feels the same way. Um, were you surprised that you guys weren't the co-main event for this card? No, I'm sort of glad that I'm not the co-main event. You know, I would like time to watch the main event. So um, hopefully Derek and, and Ty don't knock each other out in the first uh, round or something like that and give us time to – give me time to get back in the back and do all the stuff they like to do after the fights and – and things so I can get back and watch the, the main event. Hopefully be able to watch it with my family out there in the crowd. And I don't know what the other scenario would be, but in your mind, there's no doubt that if you win this fight, you should get the winner of the main event? I mean, yeah, who else is there, right? So there's nobody else. Uh, yeah, there's no clear contender at this point in time. So number three versus number four, yeah, that's the one. I know Sean Strickland's kind of been creeping up towards that conversation. Did you watch his fight uh, last week, and were you impressed at all? Or? Yeah, I was impressed by his jab. He kept his – maintained his composure, his, his uh, takedown defense. Um, <laughs> I was impressed by his post-fight interview, too. <laughs> that guy's a trip. But uh, it was uh, – you, know, you know, he didn't enjoy his uh, performance too much which I understand, you know, he wants to go in there and do what he says he wants to do. So, uh, but it was still a good match. It was still a good fight. Um, but yeah, nothing you really, I mean, I guess nothing you can write home about. And in, in the, the main event for this card, um, is there one scenario you're rooting for more than the other just for you? Like, would it be nice to face Izzy, you know, with, with his title defenses behind him? Or would you want to get that one back versus Robert? Is there an ideal opponent for you? I wouldn't – I mean, I don't care either way. I don't uh, – I'm not hanging on to that Robert Laws like, oh, I can't wait to get my hands on him. And I'm not looking up to Izzy like, oh, I can't wait to fight Izzy or anything like that. So uh, a fight's a fight. Whoever it is, I'm going to do the best I can to put you away. Um, I know the fans would like to see either of those fights. Both are exciting. Um, and for me, both are, are a welcome challenge. I look forward to – if I fight one next, I'll fight the other one some other time down the line for sure because they're both right there. And they're going to be there. Who do you predict wins that fight? I can't really make that prediction. Um, but based off of the last fight, one would have to say uh, Izzy has more of a chance of making it happen again. But that's not to take anything away from uh, Robert. He's been, he was a champ once before. Um, he's always ever... You know, he's a reaper. You know, he, I'm not going to sit here and, and stroke his balls and talk good on him or anything like that. But, you know, he is who he is. And uh, he's been at the top four as long as he's been at the top four, a good reason. So both of those guys are high-level are, are high fighters, uh, some of the best in the UFC, let alone the world. And um, they're just holding the spot for me. Thanks, man. Jared, right here. Other side. Derek was in here earlier, and he was kind of giving his thoughts on your skill set. And he said, uh, compared to your wins at middleweight, you might not be more skilled than specific, in specific areas than your opponents, but what you excel at is you're opportunistic in there where you can take advantage of their mistakes, and that's where you capitalize. So do you think he's correct in that assessment that you do excel in these opportunistic areas in, in the fight game? I mean, that's what you want to do, right? Sure. Find opportunity and uh, capitalize. So, sure, I guess so. Um, but, you know, that's his opinion. What is your opinion on his skill set in the octagon? I think a lot of fans will say that Derek Brunson is a good wrestler and hits hard, but I'm sure you know there's more to this than just those two things in his skill set. I mean, yeah, I'm not going to stroke his balls either. <laughs> so, uh, he can wrestle. Apparently, he can punch as well. Um, but he can get knocked out too. 
And what's it been like uh, at the lab lately? I know Benson just picked up that big win uh, in Phoenix, and we spoke to him before, and his prediction for this year was that, in his words, where Jared Cannonier will have a UFC title around his belt by the end of this year. Yeah, he's right. Yeah. yeah. Um, energy is high at the lab. It's always ever high. The program is continue, continues to go on. The program works. I'm a better fighter than I was my last fight. I'm going to show that Saturday night. Um, it's going to be less opportunistic and more, uh, what's the word, predatory, if you will. So, um, <sighs> anyway, um, what was the question again? Just about how, what, how the lab was going these days oh. with Benson coming off the big win and fight camps. So. Yeah. You know, um, yeah. Always riding high, man. For us to feel good about ourselves, we don't wait for people to fight and win or anything like that. You know, we get in there, we get the work that we need to get done, and that's what makes us feel good. Going in there and training as hard as we can, trying to get that 1% in every time we step into the, every time we step on a match. That's what brings me pleasure. You know, that's what uh, inspires me. That's what I aspire to do. That's the that's the work right there. That's the day that's the day to day thing right there. So, is I'm I'm so happy for Ben that he got his win. I want to see him get a belt too. I want to see him get that Bellator belt. We want to, we know, I want to have my belt on the wall. He already got his his UFC belts on the wall. I want him to get that Bellator belt on the wall or wherever he may end up. I want I want him to get what, everything he wants coming to him. And uh, I'm gonna put my UFC belt right next to it. He also hinted that he might re even think about retirement soon too. Ben's all over the place, man. Ben does what Ben wants, however he feels, and uh, he can do whatever he wants. So uh, Ben is the man. So whatever he chooses, I'm, I'm right there with him. Hi, Jared, over here. Uh, you recently said that Derek Brunson is, looks like movie character Simon Phoenix. Does that make you S Sylvester Stallone's demolition man in this case? No. Hell no. Because he had issues with Simon Phoenix. I don't want no issues with, I ain't, I ain't trying to have no, no, uh, uh, what's the word? What's the part of the movie where the bad guy does something big and now the good guy has to have his montage and come back and be good too? Climax? Yeah. No, we don't want that. I want Derek to uh, sh show his face in the opening scene. I'm going to knock it right off. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Jared. Um, your career has been going fantastic since you made the move to middleweight, but as a fighter who was once a heavyweight, do you have any issues getting the 185, and do you think that your future long-term will be at middleweight? I can go to 170. You know, um, when it's, <clears throat> if I wanted to. But uh, everybody's known, he was a heavyweight, he's a light heavyweight. I, I mean, I was fighting at heavyweight. That didn't mean I'm a heavyweight. I was never a light heavyweight. Everybody, all the guys who I fought in those divisions, I've always had the size advantage over me. And some of the guys even in this division would have the size advantage over them. They're taller, some of them are longer, you know? So, um, um, who knows what the future holds, you know? I, I will definitely be a middleweight champion. We may end up seeing double champ status, maybe even triple champ. Maybe I'll revisit my old uh, divisions. Um, you know, more ripped and chiseled, probably. I don't think I, w I could make the, uh, the heavyweight, what's the heavyweight, uh, what's the uh, lower mi limit for heavyweight? 206. Oh, well, I can make heavyweight then. So who knows, we'll see what happens. I don't like to say, I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna do that. You know, I go, uh, I go with the flow. You know, I let the, uh, whatever energy I'm feeling, whatever my ancestors are telling me, that's where I go. Thank you. Jared, over here, my man. Um, I know you're a really intelligent fighter, um, and you said to us before that you come up with your own game plans and your team works to basically refine that. Uh, I'm just wondering, is that still the case? How's that all going? Uh, we are in alignment. We all know what we need to do to get the, to get the victory. And if I don't know something, one of my guys will know. So... Um, we work together, and we, we come up with a 
good comprehensive approach to the fight, and then it's just up to me to execute. So much of the same. Do you have like a, like, what's the word? How do you basically prepare for that though? Do you know what I mean? Yes. Well, um, again, um, <clears throat> hmm, how do I prepare? Well, I know what I need to do. I watch, I definitely watch my opponent's fights. I see what they're good at, and uh, when, when I talk to my coaches and my teammates, we generally see the same thing, and <clears throat> that's usually our focus. So uh, we all know that you know I'm a pretty competent striker, and uh, people don't know, but I'm a really competent grappler as well. So um, we just... Essentially, when it comes to fight camps, it's, it's the same as regular off-season training. I'm only, only always trying to get better. We, don't, we usually just adjust, focus, adjust, adjust the focus to uh, deal with whatever they're going to do, but it's always about me being a better fighter. So I use that to my advantage. When I was getting ready, for fighting Jack, when I was getting ready to fight Jack Hermanson, we all knew he was going to try to take us down and wrestle and stuff like that. So I use it to my advantage. Hey, I'm about to fight this wrestler. Let's uh, really up the, uh, let's level up as far as wrestling. You know, put more of a, uh, what's the word? Specifically focus on that, certain aspects of my opponent. And I just ingrained it in myself. They do this well, okay. Well, I'm gonna learn how to, how to counter that. Or even do it, my, and, and even do it myself. So who knows, you guys may see me take down Brunson. I won't be holding him down and humping his leg. I won't be, bashing his face in, which is, he's pretty good at ground and pound as well, so, uh, but I feel like I'm better. Have you brought much pyrite with you this time? I got one pie, I got a piece of pyrite, and uh, I definitely brought it with me. Yeah, it's in my room right there, it's, a, it's up there in my room. Hey Jared, um, <clears throat> the fight was originally supposed to take place at uh, UFC 270. Um, when Derek was in here, he said he used that time to, you know, have some more macaroni and eat some more food. So I'm curious, what did you do in that extra time? Train. I was like, three more weeks of training for this guy? Hell yeah, let's do it. Um, you know, I eat food too. But um, I don't know. I'm not sure what his diet plan for fighting is, but I eat relatively clean throughout the year, you know. Um, so... <clears throat> Nothing much really changed. For me, I don't really have fight camps. I know guys shoot the shit and do whatever they want to when they're not in camp. But uh, I love martial arts. I love going to train twice a day. I like it. I love it. And if I didn't do it, I'd probably go crazy. I'd be ornery. I'd be bitchy, impatient. And uh, I just wouldn't be in my happy place. So. I do this regardless whether I got a name on a contract or not. Um, and that's just it. Gotcha. And he also said that uh, he felt the fight was moved um, in case, like, if something happened with the main event, um, he would step in as the replacement. Uh, were you ever given any indication that that was the case? Yeah. Same here, man. So, I don't know. His manager probably told him something that he wanted to hear. It could be the same situation with me, but... I feel like I'm in a better position. I mean, I am number three and he's number four. So, uh, yeah, I would say that I'd be more inclined to get that fight. Plus, he's already fought uh, the champ and the challenger. I've only fought the challenger, but uh, circumstances, uh, certain circumstances prevented me from gaining victory in that fight. Um, <clears throat> But I think people will be more excited to see me fight either of those guys before they want to see Derek fight them. So I don't think the UFC knows that. So wishful thinking from Derek. Absolutely. Now, a lot of people are also looking at this as a striker, striker versus grappler type of matchup. Is there anything that we're missing here? Yeah, I can grapple. You know, I trained at the MMA lab. We got <clears throat> good grapplers, D1 level wrestlers that I'm learning from. They don't have to be the same size as me, but we got some big guys in there. 
I just I learned how to do the technique. I've trained with little guys my whole, damn near my whole career. And you see, we all see how far that's gotten me. So, um, yeah, I'm not, I don't know. Um, I can grapple too. I can wrestle too. I have a pair of wrestling shoes my damn self. They're probably not as worn out as his. He's been doing it way longer than me, but my mind allows me to be just as good as any of these other guys when I need to be. So, um, again, you may see me taking him down if the opportunity presents itself. <laughs>